We've talked about the best Pokemon in the game right now, so I thought it was only fair to talk about the worst Pokemon in Pokemon Unite, why they are the worst, and what is in the future for a lot of these Pokemon. So come along with me, Jake, your resident content cowboy here. Yeehaw, as we take a look at the worst Pokemon in every role. Oh, and before we jump in, let me just say that just because these Pokemon are the worst Pokemon in all of their roles, it doesn't mean you can't win with them, it doesn't mean you can't play with them at a high level, and it doesn't mean they can't do some really impressive things in Unite. I would say that the tops and bottoms of our tier lists are constantly shrinking in Unite, and we're coming closer and closer to balance with some odd outliers here. So if any of these are your favorite Pokemon to play, just continue to make good decisions in matches and learn how to win with these Pokemon. Pokemon. Here we go. I wanted to start with our all-rounder category because this is full of stacked Pokemon inside of Pokemon Unite, but there are a few outliers, and I think everyone knows the first Pokemon that's going to be on this list, and that is Zarina. <laughs> After dominating at the World Championships, I mean, seriously, this Pokemon was on basically every top team at different points. Zarina has fallen off considerably for a few reasons, one of the biggest, of course, being a series of nerfs that this Pokemon got. Let's face it, Zarina was too powerful, now Zarina is too weak, and one of the biggest problems with this Pokemon is it is such a high skill ceiling Pokemon that if you are very good with Zarina, you put yourself in a position to dominate matches, so it's really tough to balance something that is so skill intensive. It also, of course, is hurt as a lot of Pokemon are by the addition of Slick Spoon. Slick Spoon changed the meta of Pokemon Unite in some huge ways, and now you can see this Pokemon get absolutely deleted by some of the special attackers in the game. Let's talk first about what Zarina excels at. It still is very good at diving into the back line and KOing squishy Pokemon on the enemy team, especially singling them out with its amazing Unite move. And if you watch my channel for a while, I'm sure you've seen me duo from time to time with an extremely high level player, Steve, my cat on this Pokemon, and they can still put out incredible numbers with Serena. What does the future hold for this Pokemon? If I could gaze into my crystal ball, I would say that at some point it's going to get some slight buffs, but honestly, I don't think we're going to be seeing from Zarina that soon. Look, it dominated at Worlds, it had its time in the sun, and now it needs to be put out to pasture for a little bit. Good thing Lucario is not coming back anytime soon. Lucario is coming back. So. Our next all-rounder that I have to talk about is Tyranitar, a Pokemon that is incredibly good in some very specific situations, but seems to be hampered by the fact that its leveling is a bit of a mess, its early game is a bit of a mess, and now even when it gets its levels and gets its experience, it doesn't seem as impactful as it was when it first released. Upon release, Tyranitar and the meta around it was actually quite different. There weren't other powerhouse Pokemon that really scaled very, very well into late game like Tyranitar, and now there are these Pokemon like Urshifu, and Urshifu is a weird comparison, but if you look at a Pokemon like Urshifu and you compare it to Tyranitar, you can kind of see a stark contrast in usefulness. Both Pokemon are awful at the start of the game, however, at level 5, Urshifu is a force to be reckoned with, and Tyranitar really doesn't become that until at least level 9. Even still, it feels like Tyranitar has a tough time getting through to a lot of enemies, and now it is dealing with extremely tanky frontline Pokemon like Umbreon and Lapras and Slowbro that you see in lots of games. As the meta shifts, like the shifting sands around Tyranitar, things just seem to get worse and worse for this Pokemon. The tankiness of the defenders and all of our special attackers being able to play at extreme range has made life very difficult for Tyranitar. Let's talk about what Tyranitar does well, and that's if it can find its way into a big team fight and it can stay near enemies, it can do a ton of damage and rip through things with big shields because it does true damage. It also is one of the very few Pokemon that can pierce Rayquaza's shield so it can defend a goal zone extremely well. Tyranitar feels like a Pokemon that they actually need to balance up a bit. What I would like to see for this Pokemon is its late game become more powerful. I don't mind having a Pokemon that's not good for a while and then becomes very, very good. I just think Tyranitar is actually still missing out on being very, very good in the late game. Of course, I'm also praying that one day they add Magikarp and it takes a long time, but once it finally becomes Gyarados, oh, it's so good. We'll see if it ever happens. The next all-rounder that we could talk about would be Lucario, who has fallen off pretty hard, but this Pokemon has some big buffs coming up, and I actually think this Pokemon is better than people think it is. 
With that, let's move on from our all-rounders and talk about our supporters. The difference between having a supporter on your team and not having a supporter on your team is monumental. And there are so many good supporters in Pokemon Unite. I would say that there are a couple supporters that seem to be lagging behind the rest of the group. Let's start with Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff is a really interesting Pokemon because it's extremely valuable early and sometimes mid game, but it seems like it falls off considerably late game and also gets countered extremely hard by Umbreon. Wigglytuff's Unite move giving your entire team a shield and at the same time making it so that they are immune to crowd control for a moment is great. However, that entire shield can be taken away by Umbreon, a Pokemon that you see in every single game, basically. Wiggly, like many tanky Pokemon also can fall prey to the fact that special attackers can chip away so much health now. Leaving Wiggly in kind of this bizarre spot, where for a little while it feels extremely good and then later in the match you just really, really wish it was a slow bro. And it's also a weird place for a supporter to be because many supporters heal their allies for tons and tons of HP and Wigglytuff has no way to do that. It's much more of a defender, honestly, that disrupts your opponents, puts them to sleep, and gives your team a shield. The big moments for Wiggly are its early game, which is incredible. Wiggly is also getting a buff soon to its sing, so we could see some more value out of this Pokemon. I'm not sure what else they are going to do with Wigglytuff, but I would love to see them give this Pokemon even more so it's more competitive inside the game. I just love this Pokemon, and I love Sleepy Time Wiggly Hollowware. It's one of the best, if not the best, Hollowware in the entire game. It's genius. Our next supporter that we need to talk about is Sableye. Sableye is a weird one, and don't get me wrong, you can still do some amazing stuff with Sableye, but they have nerfed this Pokemon considerably since release. Just boop, 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 tons and tons of nerfs. And let's be fair, this thing was so dang annoying that we all have to be kind of happy that they nerfed it a ton. I still feel like good Sableye players can find a ton of value in this Pokemon, but there's no question it's one of the weirdest choices to slot into a team. I think the biggest reason for that is when you see a Sableye on your team, you don't really have a support. You have this odd harasser situation on your team that can be very, very good and also can run into a situation where you're just not that impactful, especially as the match goes on into the late game. Something valuable that Sableye can do is run up a score lead against your opponents. However, outside of coordinated play, there are many situations where even having a 100, 200, point lead doesn't matter because the big fight around Rayquaza is so incredibly important and having this supporter as opposed to something like Clefable just puts you in a really unfortunate situation where you may not be able to sustain yourself through a big fight. That being said, you can also set up some amazing moments with Sableye, stunning your enemies, putting them in a situation where your team has plenty of time to KO them. Sableye is still a great Pokemon, but with all the nerfs, its win rate has fallen off a cliff and I think it is definitely one of the trickier supporters to find value in. And our last supporter I wanted to talk about, Comfey. Just kidding, this thing is still nuts. It truly is just, woo, really tough to deal with. I'm glad people have kind of walked away from it because it's so mean. All right, moving on. Let's talk about speedsters. This is a category of Pokemon that are all designed to carry a lot of your games. Get big KOs, take out enemy Pokemon, and snowball through the entire enemy team with possibly a five KO or something like that. And all of them actually do this job pretty well to varying degrees. However, there are a few speedsters that are a cut below the rest. I feel like it's only reasonable to start this conversation with Zeraora, a Pokemon that feels like has been left out in the cold for the longest time with its leveling scheme being six eight nine to get its moves and then finally 12 and 14 for its plus moves so experienced hungry and honestly it does not make sense for this pokemon thank goodness a buff is coming for this pokemon pretty soon i think we can expect to see zero aura shoot up the win rate charts this is going to be an incredible pokemon very soon mark my words there are two other speedsters that seem to be struggling more than the rest of the pack let's start with absol absol actually performs pretty well in a lot of metas doing a ton of damage but right now I feel like Absol is hurt because there are just so many massive tanky Pokemon and it's so difficult for Absol to get in and shred through their defenses quickly enough especially something like Lapras feels like the ultimate counter to this Pokemon Lapras lowers damage when it's kind of this huge burst and that's everything that Absol does is one huge burst it also relies on critical hits so sometimes you can just get a little unlucky 
and miss multiple hits in a row that you were hoping would crit and not pick up any KOs. Luckily, Absol does have some pretty great mobility and a decent Unite move. That being said, I do feel like Absol struggles quite a bit in this meta. The question is, how will they change Absol and will Absol get some sort of buff? We all remember the Absol meta, which was an absolute nightmare. So I'm not too excited about this Pokemon getting a buff anytime soon. Our final speedster on the list, Gengar. Gengar is a very weird speedster because again, like all of these Pokemon, it's on a razor's edge. Gengar could easily become overtuned and destroy everything inside the game, or it could stay exactly where it is, be a very high skill Pokemon to play, and also kind of have meh results, which is what it has right now. Gengar is the master of the one combo KO that can chain through an entire enemy team, but very similar to the problem that Absol is dealing with, there are so many tanky Pokemon that you just can't take down in one combo, making Gengar a bit of a liability on most teams, especially in some of these bigger fights. You have to be very careful about when you decide to move in with Gengar, because if you start to throw all your damage at the enemy Umbreon, you're going to be left sitting there wondering if any anyone will KO this thing as you have no mobility to get out. One of Gengar's biggest issues in my opinion is that it has really, really poor mobility compared to a lot of the other speedsters. It can get into a fight, but once it's in there, it has a lot of trouble escaping unless you want to use its Unite move or you're using your Hex to run away. And it's just unfortunate to be put into a position to use a Unite move to flee an encounter rather than to use it to do a ton of damage. I don't know if there's really a world where they can balance speedsters very well. Gengar will either be underpowered or overpowered and rarely somewhere in between for the foreseeable future. Right now, I think this is where Gengar, Absol is going to hang out. However, Zeraora, get ready. Before we move to our attackers, let's spend a little time in Defender Country. Ah, Defender Country, one of the nicest places here in these Pokemon Unite Hills. Defenders are absolutely crushing it as a class inside of Pokemon Unite right now. These massive tanks that control the battlefield and often are key to winning a lot of these big fights. There are some very, very powerful ones, but there are some that feel like they need a little love. And luckily for a couple, some love is coming. Love Love is coming for you, Mamoswine. We'll talk about Mamoswine first, as I think this Pokemon is still doing pretty well as a defender. In fact, just as a defender in general, they're all doing all right. They're just outshined by some of the top tier Pokemon, Lapras, Umbreon, Slowbro. Luckily for Mamoswine fans, it's getting a slew of buffs coming up, and I, for one, am very excited to see it. I love playing this Pokemon. The changes are great. Lower Unite move cooldown. It also knocks up enemies longer. It's passive is getting better. Earthquake, Ice Fang. If you like Mamoswine, Mammo Swine and you're not in love with where it is inside of Pokemon Unite right now, get ready because I think things are very, very bright for the future of the swine. Currently, Mammo really excels early in the game. It just dominates lanes, but all the defenders kind of dominate lanes early, and it does have a long while to get up to its full evolution. That being said, it still does all right before it gets there anyway. It's very strong right when it enters the game, which is an amazing thing for a defender. Let's move on to a Pokemon that is maybe one of the lowest tier in the game that desperately needs buffs. We all know what I'm talking about, Umbreon. Umbreon is, just kidding, come on. Crustle. Crustle has had one of the weirdest histories inside of Pokemon Unite. When the game released, it felt like it was in a reasonable state just because there weren't a lot of competitors for this role. But as the game continues to go on and on, we really see this Pokemon just left way behind the rest of the pack. There's no question that you could still do some amazing stuff with it. Rock Tomb can set up some incredible plays. Stealth Rock, Shell Smash, all of that can be really fun. You can critically hit in big ways with X Scissor, but just about everything that Crustle does feels a little cheesy and not good enough. I think there are a lot of cool ways that you could fix this Pokemon. Something that I've thought about is just give it critical hit, natural critical hit, and put it on every single one of its moves and kind of see what happens with this. Maybe we lean away from this being sort of a super tanky, almost, you know, stereotypical defender and we move into a world where this Pokemon is more of a harasser like Greedon or something like that and it does surprising amounts of damage like 
I think we need to do something fun for Crustle because it's honestly been so meh for so long. And even if you love Crustle at home, you have to admit, comparing it to some of the top tier defenders in the game, it really is not close. And it would be really cool if it was, because a lot of new players have this Pokemon, they get it for free after completing some quests. That would be a really fun one to be on a team, rather than seeing a Crustle on your team and realizing that, oh boy, we're gonna have a tough game. Our final defender is a weird one, and that one's going to be Snorlax. Now, don't get me wrong, I actually don't think Snorlax is bad. I just think Snorlax suffers from the fact that it is probably the purest defender on the list and needs more coordination than most defenders. Having a good Heavy Slam block, or even the now very popular Heavy Slam Yawn Snorlax on your team is pretty amazing. The only problem is it doesn't do the kind of damage and carry like the other defenders can. And I know what you're thinking, well, that's not the point of a defender. And that's true. However, the other defenders do it, and this one does not. Now, there of course is an option that you play Flail Snorlax, which is insane. I kid, I kid, but let's be fair. Flail Snorlax compared to having a Lapras or Umbreon on the enemy team, oh, it's just, you know, it's kind of a sad situation. I actually think Snorlax isn't in the worst spot, but I just wanted to highlight the fact that as a pure defender, it could probably do a little bit more and that would still be okay. In competitive play, it may put that Pokemon into an ungodly amazing level, but in all other forms of play, I think Snorlax could actually use a little love to make it a little bit more competitive with some of the top names, Trevenant, Slowbro, etc. And finally, we move on to our attackers. This has been the hardest category for me to nail down because as I was looking through it, honestly, every attacker is pretty dang good in Pokemon Unite. They finally pulled a Pokemon like Alola Ninetales up from the bottom tier. And now there isn't really a shiny example of a terrible attacker, even though you can look at every other role basically and say, that's a bad one, that's a bad one, that's a bad one. So the Pokemon that we're gonna look at here in the attack attacker role are still actually pretty decent, but maybe the worst in their role. So let's start with everyone's favorite, Greninja. Greninja is an incredible carry Pokemon inside of Pokemon Unite, but it does feel like it's been left behind a little bit. In fact, a lot of the attack damage carry Pokemon, Cinderace, Duraludon, Dragapult, Greninja, Decidueye, they all feel a little underwhelming compared to their special attacker counterparts because of how amazing Slick Spoon is. If there was an item like Slick Spoon, but for attackers, maybe we would not be having this conversation. The reason I wanted to start with Greninja is because one, Greninja's win rate has been struggling for quite some time. It hasn't really received some nice buffs for a while. The Water Shuriken build is fun, but it just feels like doesn't output enough damage or keep Greninja healthy enough, given that its HP is so low. And then the Surf build was kind of gutted a little while back. So you really need to stack an attack weight or just be very, very good with your secures to get a lot of value out of this. This is still a massive carry Pokemon that gets way way, way better as the match goes on, but that doesn't mean that Greninja still doesn't struggle in most games you play. In fact, I would wager that most Greninjas in solo queue that are on your team are very disappointing, and every once in a while, you are paired with a god-tier Greninja, and it's amazing. I would actually like to see some buffs for Greninja. I think it could use it. I'm not sure exactly what direction they would go, but I would love to see something done for this Pokemon, because even at level 15, it has less HP than some Pokemon basically have at level four. It's just a very, very fragile Pokemon. It takes a lot of skill to do well with, and I would love to see my solo Q Greninjas have a better chance of winning some of their games. The next Pokemon we have to talk about is Pikachu. And I know what a lot of you are thinking, Pikachu's actually pretty decent. And that's true, Pikachu's actually pretty decent. A lot of the special attackers are actually pretty decent. Pikachu is probably in the toughest spot because it has the weirdest role in the game. It's not a traditional carry like a lot of our special attackers. It feels much more like a support Pokemon. And if you play it that way, I think you end up doing very, very well with Pika. Just noticing that it's your job to stun enemies, to try to throw throw a lot of damage at them, but you can't really be the kind of damage dealer that a Glaceon or something like that is. You can't really impact the game the way a Chandelure does. You are there to support your team. And I think if you play in that style, Pikachu actually does pretty well. I still would love to see some buffs for this Pokemon because I do think it has fallen behind basically every other special attacker inside of Pokemon Unite. 
For our last attacker, I want to talk about a Pokemon that is receiving some changes coming up that could actually shift how viable it is, and that Pokemon is Duraludon. For the longest time, Duraludon has been a very not cool choice that always does well. I don't know why, nobody likes this Pokemon. Maybe it's because it looks like a big inhaler or an old refrigerator, or maybe it's because it was so dominant at some point, but there's no question that Duraludon has been a pretty unpopular pick since it was nerfed, but it has still been incredible since then. However, Duraludon has some interesting changes coming up that overall to me look like a nerf for this Pokemon. And I think we could finally be seeing Duraludon dip below that 50 50% win rate mark. Another notable attacker that could use some love is Cramorant with the Surf Hurricane build. It's fine, but it really doesn't feel like it gets to perform as well as a lot of the other ranged mage style special attackers. Things like Espeon, Alola Ninetales, they just seem to do a lot better than Cramorant right now. So if we were to see some type of Cramorant buff, it would probably be to that build. And then of course, Solar Beam Venusaur is terrible. Ding. Just kidding. But as a class, honestly, attackers are doing really well in Unite. Across the board, all of them are pretty useful inside their role. That doesn't mean you need five of them on one team. I'm begging you, solo queue teammates. Play a supporter, play a defender. We need something out here. It can't be me every game. I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening. If you really like it, share it with a friend. It definitely helps me out here. And I would love to hear from you in the comments. Who did I miss? Who do you disagree with? As always, be cool to each other, but I love to see the discussion. Thank you all. And we end with a kiss.